Hello, Boston. Come on, you could do better than that. Hello, Boston. Welcome to Cloud Foundry Summit, the first time in Boston on the East Coast. So excited to be here with each and every one of you today. And the sun came out, so that's awesome. We've got a massive amount of content over the next couple of days planned for you. But first, I want to start off with a little bit about what we're doing and why we're all here. I am appreciative of every one of you that are here, though. Many of you had to go through great logistical challenges to get here with airport closures, a small fire on Southwest Airlines. <laughs> But I appreciate it, and I'm glad we were all able to come together here. So we timed the summit with the Boston Marathon. For those of you that came and ran it on Monday, awesome job. Lon came and ran it. Um, but we also decided that we would make our theme of this running at scale. A lot has changed in the last several years for Cloud Foundry. We've been an open source project for a little over three years. And we've seen our users, half of which you hear are users, really grow and scale. And we thought, OK, well, we've got a running thing going. We've got scale going. Our theme is going to be running at scale. And so we're going to talk a lot about that this morning and throughout the week, about what that looks like to run Cloud Foundry, but run software at scale. But first, I'm going to take you on a little journey. Have you ever made a choice that changed your life? Went on a trip that opened your mind? Maybe you took a new job that launched your career. Recently, I made a life-changing choice. I changed banks. OK, maybe that wasn't life changing. But I really hate to go to the bank. I hate it. I hate to deal with it. I hate the process. So I switched to a new bank. I moved to a new bank that was digitally native day one. And for me, it was easy, simple. It's a clean experience. But for traditional banks, banks that have brick and mortar and that have been around a while, customers like me scare you. Because I'm indicative of an industry that is changing and changing quickly. And this isn't just happening to financial services. It's happening across the board. Automotive, retail, healthcare. Every single industry is being upended. In fact, we're hearing a lot about cloud. We've got retail in the cloud, banks are in the cloud. Hell, even pizza delivery is now in the cloud. And that's changing the way we think about everything. So for many of you, you're cobbling together a lot of solutions, different vendors, different technologies. And you're trying to figure out, how does this all fit together? And it's madness. Where do you start? Where do you end? How do you keep control? And how do you get, keep from getting locked in? The technologist world has gotten really big. The job each and every one of you has has gotten really big. If you're a CIO, you're having to focus on shaping the future of your company, but also, how do I turn what I'm doing into a revenue generator? no longer a cost center. If I'm an operator, you're worried about architecting the future of your company. What's the platform this runs on? How do I do that? How do I make that scale? And if you're a developer, you're creating the future of your company. You're developing the apps that are changing how your company works, how you engage with your customers. You are the front line of where it's going on. But imagine what we could do if we all worked together. 
I've talked a lot about open source and the power. Last year, I spent a lot of time talking about the power open source did by bringing together diverse minds and diverse organizations. And that's what Cloud Foundry does, is it brings together a lot of different perspectives, unites that technology, and makes it easier for you. With over half the Fortune 500 already running on Cloud Foundry, it's the choice many of you are making, particularly many of you here, to shape the future of your company. So what does the foundation do? I know many of you, you're not really familiar with open source foundations. What do we do? What is our responsibility? Our vision is to make sure that each and every one of you, your members, our users, are able to successfully shape the future of your company, whether you're a provider or you're leveraging Cloud Foundry to change your company. How do we make each and every one of you successful? So at Cloud Foundry Summit last year in Santa Clara, I asked each and every one of you to imagine the possibilities. Imagine what you could do with Cloud Foundry. But you don't have to imagine anymore. It's here, and it's at scale. We recently completed a user survey, our second, which is now a biannual event. Thank each and every one of you for responding. And for those of you that didn't, there's always next time. What we found, over 60% of the users are large enterprises. But what was also great is that if you are a Cloud Foundry user, you love it. Although 18% of you were going to have to have a conversation later. <laughs> but you love using Cloud Foundry. What we also found is that if you're using Cloud Foundry, you're also saving time and money. It's making you more effective. And you're also doing more with it. More of you now have over 50 developers running, working on the platform. And your number of apps and workloads that you're running on the platform are continuing to grow. And so that really speaks at the scale many of you are starting to run to. And that's what makes this particular Cloud Foundry Summit a great opportunity to learn more about that. What was also great is to see that nearly everyone that responded to this survey care about flexibility. Every single one. And nearly half of you are already running across multiple clouds. So what we've learned from this survey is that you care about flexibility, you care about portability of your workloads, and you're able to save time and money. And so as we think about that, and we think about where we're going to go, those continue will be focused for us for the rest of this year. And so I'm going to highlight a couple of user stories that really resonated with me as we looked at the data from this user survey and what it really meant for the future of Cloud Foundry. For a company like Volkswagen, the automotive industry is changing and changing quickly. A car is no longer something that gets you from point A to point B. It's now a mobile device. It's, it's more than, it's pulling all of this data together. It's giving you a different experience, but it's changing the way you engage and think about your car. And if you're a company like Volkswagen, you have to become a software company now to compete. And if you're going to become a software company, you have to do that across 12 different brands. So how do you do that? How do you build out a software development team and make that scalable and make that consistent across every single one of your brands? Well, they look to Cloud Foundry. They look to Cloud Foundry to give them that flexibility. In the last two years, they've scaled up to 150 developers. 
They were able to start iterating and doing rapid application de development and deployment. And most importantly, they can do that across multiple clouds because they needed that flexibility and they needed that ability to run it across multiple public clouds in multiple regions. You may have noticed this week we have a new track. For the first time ever, we have a government track because we have so many governments around the world that are using Cloud Foundry to change their business and their organization. And for the military, particularly the United States Air Force, they were aggregating a lot of data. They were pulling that data together and trying to build a coherent solution. Yeah, they have a massive budget, but 70% of that budget was going towards just keeping the lights on, maintaining the existing infrastructure they had today. Only 30% was going to new development. So the application development process was slow, and by the time applications got out the door, they were often obsolete. So how do you compete with that? The Air Force leveraged Cloud Foundry and started building in agile processes and taking advantage of that transformation journey. For them, they started moving more of their workloads to the cloud. And they were able to flip that allocation of their funding. So that now 70% goes to new application development. Oh, and it saved them $600 million. Although, for those of you that have hung around me along, I like to talk about Home Depot a lot. So I want to talk a little bit about them here, because everybody knows who Home Depot is. How many people have shopped at a Home Depot? Right. And how many of you, the first thing you think about when you think about Home Depot is, wow, they got an amazing cloud-native experience? <laughs> Home Depot is literally a brick and mortar selling brick and mortar. And, but they're retail, too. And so now they're having to compete against the likes of Amazon to sell hammers. And if you're a company like Home Depot, how do you compete with that? You're competing with a growing cloud company. You're competing in an industry that is being completely upended. And oh, by the way, you need to build out a software development team. And you're also competing against talent. How do you do that? For a company like Home Depot, they use Cloud Foundry. In the last couple of years, they've actually scaled out their team. Actually, closer to three years at this point, there are 2,500 developers that are writing code on the platform. 3,000 applications in production and growing. Billions of transactions across that platform every single month. And they were able to shave their deployment time from every six weeks to every 15 minutes. Yeah, that's right. Home Depot is deploying code into production every single day. And for them, it's changing the way they engage with their customers and bringing that experience to where they are. So we've looked at the automotive industry. We've looked at the retail industry and the military. Just a few of the industries that are being transformed now. But we're also looking at the choices they've made and how they've really enabled them to compete in a quickly changing market. So as we think about Cloud Foundry, and we think about what it actually does. In fact, we actually had this conversation yesterday at, a, at the board meeting. Like, what is Cloud Foundry in a nutshell? It's the best platform for developers, the best. How do you keep that up? What do you focus on? You're focusing on what a platform can provide. Velocity, interoperability, and innovation. Velocity, speed to market. How fast can you get that idea out the door? Innovation, the ability to iterate on those ideas. Continuous delivery pipelines, taking that feedback and getting it back and iterating those applications getting that back out the door. 
and interoperability, the connective tissue to other technologies, other communities, other projects, and how that makes Cloud Foundry not only be the best platform today, but also be the best platform in the future. So this year in 2018, at the foundation, we're really focusing on two things. Strengthening our ecosystem and cultivating our community. And we have an amazing community. All of you here today, you're our community. We've had an amazing amount of velocity in the project over the last year, but there's room to grow. We've seen a tremendous growth in membership. In fact, 40% of our members though, which makes us so different, are end users. End users like yourself are members of the foundation. You're not only using open source to change your company, but you're participating in the open source community. So what's next? As we think about community, we've, we've, you know, we've been growing this community and building, and each and every one of you have been part of that. But for us, how do we give more focus to that, and how do we do better? Well, last year we hired Swarna Padilla to lead community for us. And if you see her, you should say hi. She's around. And she's going to really help us focus on curating the interaction and engagement with each and every one of you, bringing meetups to where you are, and bringing those conversations together. We're also expanding globally. You're going to hear me talk a lot this year about China and Korea and Europe, because Cloud Foundry is growing. And we're going to make sure that we continue to build the communities around that. And then finally, we're going to continue to encourage contributions. I'm going to ask more of each and every one of you to participate, give back, and bring your ideas to the table. An ecosystem is a big focus for me as well this year. On the stage at Summit in Basel, we launched the Foundry, an online marketplace of services for our end users to find and get help. Last year, we launched it with 600 services in October. Today, I'm thrilled to say that we're at 4,900 services in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. And it's growing. This represents the breadth of Cloud Foundry. So we talk about what do we want with Cloud Foundry. We want it to be around for a long time. We want it to continue to grow and thrive. And so how do we do that? We reflect that through community and the ecosystem. And we're going to continue to grow those capabilities through new CPIs, new service brokers, and different integrations. And so I'm going to spend a lot of time this year also talking about interoperability. And what does interoperability mean? It means making sure that we are building bridges to other projects, other technologies, and other communities so that as these technologies grow and mature, we're going to bring those up and expose those to you, the enterprise users, and you, the enterprise providers. Last year, that took the form of CNI and OCI, the Open Container Initiative. This year, it's Kubernetes, Istio, Envoy, and many others. We're going to continue to do that because it's important that Cloud Foundry as a technology continues to grow. But I'm also going to ask that each and every one of you continue to bring those ideas to the table and say, what else should we be doing? What else does this need to look like to meet your needs? And we have a little few announcements today. First one I'd like to bring up on stage to announce the first is that Alibaba Cloud is now a gold member of Cloud Foundry Foundation. And I'd like to bring up Hong Choing, Director of Business and Development, to talk about that. Thank you, Hong. Hey, Abby. Nice Hi. to meet you. Happy to be here. We're so excited to have you here. Likewise. We're so thrilled to have Alibaba Cloud as a, a member of the foundation. 
Uh, can tell us a little bit about what that means for Alibaba Cloud. Happy to. And hello, Boston. <laughs> How many of you heard of Alibaba Cloud based on your clap? All right. That's awesome. Well, uh, we're, we're super excited to be part of the family. Um, to answer your question, I mean, at Alibaba Cloud, we're proud of providing the best technology platform solutions to our customers in which for them to run their business. And you know, today, we are the leading uh, public cloud infrastructure provider in China and among the top three globally. So I guess the secret's out now, right? Uh, I and, think so. And with, with our membership with the Cloud Foundry, I mean, given that this is, Cloud Foundry is the first you know, open source pass offering, it's designed for multi-cloud, multi-framework, and multi-languages. And in essence, this aligns really, really well well, what, what Alibaba Clouds are doing, because it's all about giving customer choice. We want customers to operate anywhere in the world. And it just, from a developer perspective, and I guess all the audience here are developers, right? That's so, a nice mix. My nice mix. As a public cloud platform vendors, we love our developers. We love our partner ecosystem. You represent those developers who are building enriching solutions for your customers, and as a Cloud vendor, we encourage you to join our journey in this process and go delight the customers together. Now, one of the stats you mentioned earlier today that I wanted to remind you is um, we saw a few hands go up at new Alibaba Cloud, but not all. How many regions is Alibaba Cloud in today? <laughs> I would bet if, I, if you had to guess, well, let me just put it this way, 43. 43, 43 regions. global availability zone. So we're serious. Um, anything that we do, we want to make sure that we do it well. And uh, we have, um, and based on demand, uh, we are continually uh, assessing where else to grow. Well, that was important. I wanted to, to flag the, the breadth of Alibaba Cloud and the availability because we also wanted to announce that the Alibaba Cloud CPI is now available and has been merged into the upstream. Yeah, and we're super excited with that because what that means is that now, all our partners and our developers, we just made it easy for you to, to interoperate and run on Alibaba Cloud. That's right. Yeah. We're so thrilled to have Alibaba Cloud as a member, and we're looking forward to doing a lot more with you. Well, our pleasure, and thank you. Come join yeah. the journey. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Han. Thank you. So we're continuing to grow in membership and capability, and I wanted to bring up a couple of other announcements. Next, we have Don Bulia, the GM of Cloud Developer Services for IBM, to talk about their new offering. Don. How you doing? Thank you for joining us in Boston, and the sun came out, and it's been a great week. It has. It has. It's uh, good to see that it's not raining anymore. It's not raining anymore. <clears throat> so tell me about this new offering IBM has. Yeah, so, so as you know, Abby, we're really looking at enterprise customers when we design our cloud. And, and based on the feedback from them, we've heard consistently that in order for them to adopt public cloud in particular, they need to have a few things. Um, they need to be able to control placement of the workload, uh, which geography it's in. Most of the time that's due to regulatory type concerns, uh, in-country concerns. They need isolation. Uh, and then they need to make sure that they can you know, offer dedicated environments for them, not just uh, shared only. Um, so as a result of that, that's really the design point we use for our container service on the IBM Cloud, which is based on Kubernetes and has those attributes uh, associated with it. As a result of that, we've had a lot of success. We got a lot of feedback from that. And what we're announcing today is that we're actually able to now deploy Cloud Foundry on top of that uh, container-based infrastructure. And so that is uh, what we're announcing today. And that gives us the ability to place Cloud Foundry workloads in any of our data centers and regions, and ultimately allows us to give the isolation and uh, the uh, dedicated environments that people are looking for with a very cloud-like model. That is so awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to, to see that momentum. And I know that your customers are as well. Absolutely. I have a demo, if uh, you would like me to show it to you. I would love to see this. I've been waiting all day to see this demo. <laughs> well, hopefully we won't tempt the demo gods too much here. So, uh, OK, let me, uh, let me quickly go through this uh, for folks. Um, if we can switch. OK. Uh, so this is, this is our IBM Cloud environment. Um, because this is still uh, 
just announced and, and an alpha. It's in the experimental services section. Um, so that's what you see at the top here. Uh, and if, if we scroll down through that, you'll see that one of the choices here now is a Cloud Foundry enterprise environment. If I were to click on that and uh, the Wi-Fi is working, which it is, then you'll see that um, I get an opportunity to, to name my Cloud Foundry environment. And, uh, And in this case, the pricing plan is still free because it's experimental. That will obviously not be the case uh, forever. <laughs> Are you sure? And, I that could be an interesting feature. <laughs> and then once I go to configuration here, you'll see that I get a few things that I can do. Um, and this will obviously expand. Right now, we have this set up to uh, a couple of our nodes in Dallas. This will expand, expand out into the data centers that we have available in, in the IBM cloud. Uh, so you'll be able to target where you place it and where that workload goes. From a hardware perspective, you'll be able to decide on shared versus dedicated. And then uh, you can see the CF version here as well as different machine types and kind of a t-shirt size sort of model. But if I go down to the infrastructure, you'll see that where you'd normally see maybe VMs as an infrastructure, now you get to name uh, your Kubernetes cluster in this particular case and where you're going to target Cloud Foundry to, uh, to be deployed. And you see some other network configurations. Now, at this point, I would normally hit Create. And in a few minutes, what you'll see is all of that infrastructure deployed and Cloud Foundry deployed on top of it. And you get a running Cloud Foundry instance at the other side of that. I'm not going to do that, because that would absolutely tempt the demo gods. And it takes a few minutes. So I'm going to go instead to uh, you know, kind of the, the, uh, the chef's kitchen uh, on TV version, where we go right to the, the thing that's already been baked. Uh, I previously deployed a, a, a cluster. Um, and what you'll see as you go through your dashboard in our cloud is you'll see that there's a CFEE demo cluster, uh, which is created as a result of me creating the CFEE demo uh, in the Cloud Foundry environment. And if I were to click in on that, you get a dashboard that shows you um, the details of this particular CF instance. And uh, you'll see the API endpoint at the top. This is where you'd target your CF push. Um, you'll see details about what's being used. Obviously, not much being used here. We don't have much running in this particular one, as well as uh, information about the kube cluster and then the applications that are deployed, as well as the users that are deployed on it. And so um, as we build this out, what you'll see on this panel is the ability to shrink and grow that environment as needed, um, be able to, to manage all the aspects of that. And now you have a, a dedicated instance of Cloud Foundry on our cloud. You didn't have to deal with any of the infrastructure. It runs on our container service. That is awesome. So when is this going to be available for people to check out? Uh, this should be available in third quarter, so at the end of the uh, first half. So. That's exciting. Well, Don, thank you so much for coming on stage to show this. And we're all excited about the new IBM Cloud Foundry Enterprise Edition. My pleasure. Thanks, Abby. Thank so while we're waiting for the slides to come back. There we go. I have a couple more announcements. So bear with me. I'd also like to bring up on stage Thomas DiGiacomo, the CTO of Suze, to talk about their latest offering. Come on out, Thomas. How are you doing? Excellent musical choice. I didn't select the music. Actually. They knew. They know you, Thomas. They know you. Hey, good afternoon. Good evening. So we have an announcement to do. Uh, Suze is developing a Cloud Foundry-based solution called SUSE How is it called again? SUSE Cloud Application Platform. SUSE Cloud Application Platform, <laughs> right? Everything is a platform. But, uh, and today, we announced that it's Cloud Foundry certified, so we are very uh, happy about that. Yes. We're here. It's a big milestone. It means a lot to us because we strongly believe in freedom of choice for users, for Cloud Foundry users. But we have to keep consistency in the CF experience across the different platforms, right? And so it should not depend on the choices that you make today, but we should also give you freedom of choices for the future, changing platforms and taking what's best for you. Um, so we are very happy. And it's also reflecting on all the work we're, we're doing in the community. So we are an open source first company, and we try to do as many things upstream as we can. So we contribute to the existing CF projects, we also contributed some new things around user interface, containerizing Cloud Foundry, and more to come. So yeah, we're, we're happy about that. Lots of amazing projects in the works. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we have to talk about Kubernetes a bit as well, right? Yes, we have to. 
So through the cloud application platform is also Kubernetes certified. And uh, of course, it's fully open source. So we're trying to help bring the best of both worlds together. We have a lot of customers using containers who ask us to bring the CF experience to their container cluster because they don't get uh, the, all the good cloud foundry, CF push things on a native Kubernetes cluster. So we developed a cloud foundry, containerized version of cloud foundry that can run on any type of Kubernetes cluster, public cloud, bare metal, VM, whatever. And uh, I'm not as brave as Dan, so I'm not going to do a live demo now. There's one tomorrow, so we will have a SUSE containerized cloud foundry running, running on top of uh, Microsoft Azure Kubernetes services tomorrow. That's exciting. We're looking forward to that. Well, Thomas, thank you so much for coming on thank stage you. to talk about the new SUSE cloud application platform, and you should check out that demo. I have one more announcement. I won't bring anybody up on stage because apparently he can't come up on stage to talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it. Today, we also wanted to announce another certified distribution, cloud.gov. Yes. For those of you that haven't been following 18F, and Brett, I know you're somewhere in the crowd here, 18F has done an amazing job of delivering through open source, Cloud Foundry to change the federal government. And today, we're excited to announce that it is now a certified distribution, so they can continue to deliver Cloud Foundry services to the government. And if you're not following the work that the ATNF has been doing, they are really awesome in that they put everything out there on Get. So they are very transparent about the work that they're doing and are willing to share it with everyone. And so I highly recommend that you follow them go out to their Get repo, or just read their blogs where they're really talking about all the work that they're doing. And oh, by the way, they were about 18 months ago the first one to ever FedRAMP certified Cloud Foundry. So the version they're running for the government is now FedRAMP certified, Cloud Foundry certified, and now available to everyone in the government to use. So if you're keeping track at home, that's eight certified distributions for 2018. And we're really excited to show the breadth of the ecosystem, but also the capabilities that Cloud Foundry brings to a lot of unique organizations and deployments. So as I wrap up my quasi monologue here this morning, or this afternoon, it's been a really long day. As I wrap up my monologue, I did want to leave you with a couple of things. Get engaged, and I'm, I'm gonna continue to, to, to beat this drum all week. Cloud Foundry is only successful because each and every one of you are participating in it. It is an open source project. And for it to continue to thrive and grow, it needs each and every one of you to be part of that journey. So I'm going to ask you all to continue to get engaged, involved, and bring your voices to the table. But I'm also gonna ask you to contribute and contribution to an open source project can be hard for many of you. The contribution takes many forms. Your time, your voice, if you uh, do docs, helping with docs, marketing, amplification of the story, or code. You all have amazing talents and ideas, and we need each and every one of them to be part of our community and part of the future of Cloud Foundry. Ultimately, every one of us just want control. Control over what we do, how we do it, and how we get there. The future of cloud is at your fingertips with Cloud Foundry. We're working towards a world where every single one of us has what we need to make great things. This is one of those choices that changes everything. One of those choices that gives you control. And it's just the beginning. Thank you.